Hello friends, welcome to my channel Sushant Chess Files. Today we are going to have a look at the next topic that is the defensive combination. So what do we mean by defensive combination? Uh, generally what happens in the course of game we see situations where the position looks little inferior. Okay, But the side who is defending the position instead of just trying to hold the position he tries to create a counter attack and that combination which happens or takes place is the only source of defense. So hence the term defensive combination. So we are defending by making a combination. So here this is the position. The first example is slightly different I would say because if we have a look at the position white attack is building up on the near the black king. Okay, This is a black to play position. So we cannot really say that black is inferior in this example. But in the next two three examples, the side will be really inferior and he will try to make a defense by creating a strong combination. Here black is not really much worse. If we try to locate the activity, we see one problem. The rook, bishop and the other rook, they are all totally away from the white king. So no chance of combination is like practically possible. But white has one weakness here. See the queen is aiming near the black king. Rook is aiming near the black king. This rook looks well placed. This knight on e1 is badly placed. Bishop can come from the c1 at 6 diagonal. So white wants to play something like f5 or g5 in near future. Black exploits the fact that the white queen is not well placed. So here if we look at black candidates, see very few to choose from. There is bishop g2, there is c3, there is d3 and there is one unexpected attack the move g5. <coughs> black thought of the move g5 here. Bg2 allows just knight g2. So black thought of the move g5 which at first looks like a blunder. See after g5, queen h5, queen would attack the rook. That is one problem. And second after g5, fg5, fg5, the queen has got place, right? But we see that it's a simple double attack. See g5, f into g5, f into g5 it looks like bishop takes g5 but here rook takes f1 and we see that the position is winning for black so black has been able to make a combination from what looked like a bad position and after g5 if white plus queen h5 then g6 and the queen on h5 is stuck and it is getting trapped so in this chapter, we will see two themes recurring. One, the surprise element, like we did in the previous chapter of surprise move. See, this g5 must have come as a surprise to white. And second, the defense is happening through means of a combination. Let's look at the next position here. This position is again black to play. And here we see black is in serious trouble. There is a dangerous spin on the d5. The bishop is unable to move. If we try to do the move bishop a2, I am just starting with some moves to explain you how difficult the situation is. So, if we try to do bishop a2 in order to queen the pawn, there is rook d8 check, rook into d8, rook d8 check, king goes to h7 and black can, white can just play rook to b8 after b1, rook b1, b1 and we see that the position won't be winning for black after b a2. And if b a2 is not played, there is simply e into d5. So the position looks like either it is equal or it will become losing. So what is black supposed to do here? So black uses here one factor that is in his favor, the form on the 7th rank. Okay. But how to get rid of this pin? So there are some other very nice candidate moves. Let's find the moves. There is one rook c2 check. There is some bishop discovered attacks like bishop e4, but bishop e4 fails to rook d8. And we see the f4 bishop is the defender of the c1 square. So black wants to win by means of rook c1, but the f4 bishop is the defender. So hence there is the move e5. See, very strong move. Doing a double attack. If bishop takes e5, then rook c1 and the pawn will win on b1. So see, nice tactics, e5 bishop into e5 
R C one. If rook takes C one, then B C one queens. And if we don't take, then B one is going to become queen by force. So let's say if we play rook D five here, then B one just becomes queen. In fact, we can take rook into D five first. No need to give up the rook on D eight. Now let's look at the main move after E five. Rook takes D five. Rook into d5, and now it looks like White can hold the game after e d5. E into f4 very strong, and now suddenly Rook c1 is a major threat, and because of e f4, the squares e3 and g3 got blocked. So what has happened? The king is going to get cut off on the seventh rank. See, this is a very important end game technique: the absolute control of seventh rank. Of course, we have started doing rook and games now. I will be teaching you all that soon. So white has to play the move rook b1 here. Otherwise, rook c1 comes. So after rook b1, first comes rook c2 check. So now the king has to go down. So whenever the rook is controlling the seventh rank totally, where the king cannot hide behind the pawns, that is called absolute control. So here it's like absolute control of the rank. King is unable to move up, and now comes. Rook c1 check. When after the trade of rooks, pawn becomes queen and black wins the game. So here white plays d6. Then also there is a simple move rook c1 because after d7 rook takes d1 and the pawn's promotion to d8 is stopped. Let's look at the next position here. Again the position is black to play. So what we see here the position. At first we see that it's Of course, not totally losing for black and all, but what we see, white's pawn structure is way better near the king side. Black's king is open. The queen, bishop, we can see they are blocked. Okay, bishop is obstructed by the queen. Queen is not looking very active. Knight on e4 is well placed. Rook on d8 and h8 both are relatively well placed. Both are on the open file. But white at first looks far better over here. F into G5 is going, and Bishop into E4 is one of the threats. So at first look, it is like White is doing reasonably well, and he has threat of Bishop E4. So when Black thought of this position, he saw that I have got one active piece on E4. Rook on D8 and H8 are active. So Black started thinking of some resourceful way to exploit the fact that. King is not having place on d2. So what comes to his mind is really interesting. He thinks of the move queen a3. See, at first queen a3 is a very attractive move. Queen a3, b a3, bishop a3 check. See, moves are forced. King has to go to b1, and then knight c3 check. King a1, and we see a nice tactical idea, knight d1, which can attack the queen. But we can't make a fork, right? So if the king would be on b2, we can make a fork. So we can do b b2 check, k b2 and knight d1. See that is a very interesting pattern. Knight and bishop are covering all the four squares. So after b b2, he has to take. But the thing still doesn't work because after knight d1 comes rook d1. One more thing that Black has to worry about whether after queen a3 it's forced to take b a3. So what we know after queen a3. I cannot play bishop e4 because queen is hanging. Okay, and if b3 is not taken, then queen is coming to a1 with mate. So I might have to play something like kb1. But then knight c3 check can open the position. <coughs> so Black considered all these things, and he came to the conclusion that this h1 rook is the defender. See a surprising element again. The h1 rook was defending the d1 rook. So the move which come to his mind, why not use this active rook and play rook into h2 first? So let's go to the solution here. Black starts with rook h2 very strong. Forced to take rook h2, otherwise the piece is lost. Bishop into e4 will allow just rook d1 check, and then h1 is hanging. Or if the h rook takes, then this piece is lost. Just take and do f e. So rook takes h2. Now comes queen into a3, and now we see in all variations white is in serious trouble. Let's look at the move kb1 first, because many will say it's not forced to take. But after kb1, there is a very nice tactic: knight c3 check. 
pawn has to take on c3 and black can play a very strong move king a8 threatening rook b8 check which is almost unstoppable maybe i can do bb5 but to bb5 still rook b8 and when white is losing because there is no c4 queen takes queen is coming up and white's position collapses over here so the game went on with the move b a3 then bishop a3 check forcing kb1 now comes knight c3 check king a1 all this we calculated in our mind and we saw that the h1 rook was the defender and now comes the king move bb2 check king takes on b2 knight d1 check and it's a knight fourth so after king c1 knight takes e3 and we see that after all this what has happened we took these two pawns for free and at the most black can do is play fg and recover one of the pawns so still black is far better materially and he has got a strong a passed pawn here black has a very strong move knight g4 it stops rook at 6 and we are going to get e5 after which we see that d3 is also hanging so like any move after rook at 7 we see that knight into e5 rook at 6 knight d3 cd rook d3 and black is winning in that position let's have a look at the last position this is really interesting one and i i would say one of the best ones because black's position is indeed looking in serious trouble now okay and what is happening white is about to play king h2 or mainly white is about to get his rook to the defense once the rook comes to d1 white must be able to convert his game very easily what black sees here he is an exchange down but the h passer has advanced a lot and it's a protected passer it is supported by a pawn and this pawn mass f3 g4 h3 can create some problem near the white king so here white is actually looking in a winning position but black makes a very nice combination over here here actually there are two ways uh, black actually goes for the more forced one here let's see what is more forced two candidate moves come to mind one is g3 okay after which fg bishop e3 and when if king goes to f1 then h2 and the h pawn promotes the point is it's not forced to take fg so black went other way round in the game but i think g3 also wins we'll get a similar position by transposition after g3 rook d7 is forced because the rook is trying to reach the first track i hope you understood this g3 fg bishop e3 check if king f1 then h2 and if the pawn queens by force the rook is unable to control after rook b8 check g7 and the rook cannot control the h1 square after g3 white has to play the move rook d7 and when we transpose to the game almost is similar to the game and here black has the move bishop e3 very strong and now what happens after fe we reach the same position so in the game black played the move bishop e3 first he did it other way around the point is very simple if fe3 then g3 only move rook d7 rook is trying to come to the first rank and stop the pawns from queening but there is a simple tactic here first f3 check forcing the king on f1 so that the see we don't want h2 check k h1 f2 when rook on d1 will guard the f1 square so first f2 check forcing the king on f1 now the rook from d1 will not guard the h1 square and now play h2 to which the only defense kg2 and here there are two kind of uh, two ways actually either f1 queen or h1 queen first and then the other one queens but do remember whenever such a uh, such pawns are there on f and h files or that is bishop and rook files we should do first h1 queen king takes after which f1 queen is checkmate that is the benefit of playing h1 first after f1 queen g3 pawn is guarding the h2 square and king is in the corner of the board so the white king gets mated here after bishop e3 white plays rook d7 and now comes g3 to which white if plays the move rook d1 
then bishop takes f2 check far better than gf2 and now if king h1 then very strong move g2 check king h2 and here there are several ways we can play the move from g1 and convert the game after g1 g1 bg1 kg1 and do note that this is a zigzag position after the white pawn moves are fixed or the white pawns cannot move whenever king moves to any of the squares h2 or f2 wins let's say e5 king f8 and whenever king moves to f2 then h2 and the pawn promotes and if king h2 then f2 and the pawn promotes to queen e6 allows f6 b5 allows a b5 and black wins and after bf2 check king f1 h2 and now there is no defense to h1 queen and black wins the game so after rook d8 check kg7 rook h8 then king h8 so this was the idea of showing you some combinations based on the ref defensive resources how when other things don't work the combination acts as a resource for defense so i hope you are enjoying these lessons do like share and subscribe the channel thanks for your time